Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 2nd of August. Yes, somehow it is August already. Um, as always, please like, subscribe, comment and share. And just for consistency, my goal is to kind of release these at 11 o'clock central uh, every Sunday. Again, if you subscribe and hit the little bell, you'll get a notification when I release them. Uh, new videos this week. I recorded a video all about the new reduced scope role assignment feature of Azure AD. Now I can give someone a role for a set of users and groups instead of the entire Azure AD. So I'll go into that in detail in that video. And I also create another video just about understanding what's the relationship really between Azure subscriptions and Azure AD. I think mean, there's been a little bit of confusion, so I kind of clear those up in that video. Um, if you wanted to actually hear me live, the uh, Azure Singapore user group have asked me to give a live seminar on Azure Active Directory. It's going to be kind of an ask me anything. Um, it's free. So if you wanted to go and sign up, that'd be 7 a.m. Texas time. So I'll be probably a little bit bleary eyed, um, but that's kind of open if you wanted to attend. Nothing to do with computers at all, but I saw this and I thought it was super, super cool. Uh, you can send your name to Mars. So if you're into space, uh, maybe your kids are interested, whatever that might be, go and type your name in, you get a little boarding pass and your name will be sent to Mars uh, on a microchip. Uh, it's pretty cool. Actually related to Azure, um, on the compute side, so there are various virtual machines that have InfiniBand. And when I have InfiniBand, there's capabilities that let me offload a lot of the work sending data to the network car to the network from the CPU. And this is this kind of MPI and RDMA, that message passing interface remote direct memory access. So for some of those series like the H series that was already enabled, now for some of the N series, they're actually going to be enabling this capability. So now with this turned on, for example, RDMA, I can just say, hey, um, network adapter, take this huge chunk of app memory and send it down the wire. The CPU doesn't have to do it piece by piece anymore, so it offloads a lot of work from the CPU. Now to do this, there will actually be some downtime. So there's actually a schedule um, being published that is actually walking through um, exactly for the series and when exactly that is going to go and happen. So you can kind of check in on that. Now, after you actually turn this on, there is actually steps to perform to get the full functionality. And again, this article kind of walks through those for you. So definitely um, go and take a look at that if you're using those series virtual machines. On the Azure storage, so NFS v3, I kind of alluded to this last week, is now available on Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, which is block blob. So now on that hierarchical namespace enabled, and this is preview, if I'm using a block blob storage account of premium SKU, when I turn on that hierarchical namespace, there's also now going to be an option to turn on NFS3. You have to sign up for this. You have to enable it for your subscription. But if you do this, now I can use NFS v3. So this is on block blob. This is going to be fantastic for very read heavy sequential read operations, very large scale. It's going to be great for that. Remember, I still have other options for NFS. There's Azure NetApp Files. That gives me a v3 and a v4.1 SKU option. And then Azure Files has an NFS 4.1. Now, there is no ACLs associated with this today. The way I lock this down is through the network connectivity. So I have to deploy a service endpoint or private endpoint to use this. And then anything on that network or peer to that network or connected to that network can then use it if I've not blocked it through things like um, network security groups. So that's how I can leverage that functionality. Then there's a whole bunch of miscellaneous things this week. Firstly, Azure AD Cloud Groups. Now this is super cool. Ordinarily, when I give an Azure AD role, not Azure roles, Azure RBAC, I can grant to groups. But Azure AD roles, I can only give to users today. I cannot assign them to a group. And part of the reason for that is concerns about kind of privilege elevation. 
If I was an exchange admin, I can change group memberships. So if I gave a group a role, well, potentially I could go and add myself to that group and then get that new role. So now they've got this special new type of group. And it's a flag I set when I create the group, only at creation time. Basically, is assignable to role. Only global admins and privileged role admins can create these types of groups and manage the members, but they can delegate and let other people then manage the membership of that group. If I create one of these groups, I can now assign roles to that group, either directly through Azure AD or privileged identity management. So here I'm gonna jump over to the portal. I'm gonna jump over to Azure AD. And if I look at my groups, we can see I've got these a whole bunch of different groups over available here. But if I do a new group, one of my options is now Azure AD roles can be assigned to the group. And I've created two groups actually configured with that flag. So now if I actually go, actually go back to my Azure AD and I look at roles and administrators, I could actually say, hey, I've got one of these roles, let's say billing admin, and I could actually now add an assignment. And for the member selected, oh no, it just shows me users, but now I'll actually see those two groups that I created with that flag set. So now, and again, I could use that in PIM as well. This gives me a great capability to now actually assign Azure AD roles to groups. So I now have that option. There's a new PowerShell command to actually call Azure REST methods. Now, when new functionality comes to Azure, it hits the REST API first, then PowerShell CLI, and then the portal. If I'm using PowerShell and this brand new capability comes out, I want to use it straight away. Now, historically, that means I have to go and get a bearer token and then invoke a REST method through my PowerShell. Now, with this new invoke AZ REST method, I really just say the API version I want, um, the call I want, and it does everything else for me. So now I can get to those brand new bleeding edge capabilities from PowerShell without having to go and manually go and get bearer tokens and, and create the body that I want to send through that RESTful interface. So it makes it a lot easier for me. Um, Azure Monitor now has a community repository. So this gives the ability now that I can actually go and browse this repository and I can see various scenarios, various services, and it really breaks it down into thinking about KQL queries, um, workbooks and alerts. So I could go and look at a folder, we'll see alerts, queries, workbooks. Maybe someone's created some nice queries around activity logs. Oh yeah, there, there were some I could use. Maybe someone's created alerts, or that tends to have less of those right now. But it really is just a great way. Hey, I want to do something in Azure Monitor. Now there's that repository that I can actually go and leverage. Next, Azure Monitor Logs the Query Explorer now will actually show me any saved queries. So once again, if we quickly hop over to the portal, if I go and look at a log analytics workspace, I'll just kind of pick one. I'll go and look at my actual logs and then I'll fire up um, the Query Explorer. You'll now see on this right hand side, I've got my saved queries broken down by category and I can easily now go and pull up those queries I've saved. So it just makes it kind of more available to me. So just a, a nice interface feature. The Windows Virtual Desktop Portal integration, that ARM integration, role-based access control is now GA. Also that Teams AV redirection. So remember the point of the AV redirection is if I'm using audio or visual, if I have to send that traffic up to my virtual desktop in Azure, then over to another virtual desktop and then back down to their client, that's really not good for audio visual. So what this redirection does is it opens a path directly between the two clients and that's where the audio and visual is actually sent. So it gives a much better experience. And uh, also the remote desktop client for Android now actually supports Windows Virtual Desktop Connections. So just the generic, regular remote desktop client on Android 
I can now see my WVD as well. The Azure Cost Manager has now a no value grouping. So sometimes you're going to have resources. Let's say I, I group by um, resource group name, for example. Well, some things aren't deployed to a resource group, so they, they wouldn't show up properly. Now there's actually these selections of kind of no value, untagged, other purchase. And then from within there, I can then drill down and get more detail. So if I quickly kind of jump over and look at that, if I jump back home, look at cost management, go to cost management, go to cost analysis. What I can do from here is there's various types of filters. So if I add a filter and I was to pick something like resource group name, well, notice there's now a no value option. So I can actually now select that no value option. And then I can still go and group by and really drill down and see well, what are those things that aren't in a resource group. So now I can go in and see where am I spending my actual money. Uh, so that's it. That's the kind of roundup for this week. I hope that was useful. And until next week, stay safe.